What's up, people? It's your girl Adiola. First of all, see, this is why it's not good to lie. No, be so. Have you guys heard about the news, my people? Che, Ashe, Madame Ungozi diverted. I mean, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Did I say Madame Ungozi? God forgive me. But you know, never. I can never say anything bad thing about that woman. My people, did you hear that the finance ministry diverted one billion dollars? Loans so meant for the rail projects. <laughs> Niger, you see? This is why on this show I will always say that these people are buying locomotive trains for us. They are not buying new trains, they are buying locomotives. Some of you will say, eh, at least they are buying something. Adiola, you never see anything good in Nigeria. See your life now, eh, Nigerians, see your life. Eh, these people have been checking you, not be so one billion dollars. Eh. Madam, what happened to one billion? Eh? Okay, let me not ask you because you know PhD, PhD, World Bank. Amen. By the way, is it true that uh, the House of Rep members have been paid 27 million naira and the senators were paid 35 million naira for their hard work in the last two months? <laughs> Whoa! Naija, Naija. Have they deliberated more than 12 times? Have they passed any bill or, I mean, <laughs> like 5 million naira, just like that. See, this is why everybody wants to be senators in Nigeria. Not be so, someday I'll be first lady. None of these things even bothered me. Let me tell you what has been bothering you. I've been battling with accepting the fact that the former president, Good Lord Jonathan, is actually from Nigeria Delta. Hey! I don't, thank you, my brother. I don't believe it myself that himself and his wife, Mama Peace, Yes, that they are both from Niger Delta, as well as the former petroleum minister, Madame Madweke. They said that she's sick. Uh, by the way, this photo was photoshopped. I know this is not Madame. This is the original photo. They photoshopped it. Anyway, get well soon, Madame, because that's six billion naira. No, nine billion. Get well soon, Madame. We are all praying for you. May God heal you very soon. I can't believe they are from Niger Delta, especially since I heard that uh, 183 billion naira that was meant for Niger Delta development was diverted into private pockets. <laughs> Pockets of the members of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. I said, how can that be? How did this happen? Under the watch of a president that is from Niger Delta? That is $918 million. So almost $1 billion just like that. Chai, Nigeria, Nigeria. But no, why is it that it is now that we are finding out all these things? So these things have been happening all these years and they are all just coming out all of a sudden. Hey, there is God in everything that we are doing. I wonder what Nigeria would have been if the same government had continued. I'm not saying Jonathan shouldn't have continued. I'm just saying we are finding out many things nowadays. Uh -huh. When I was reading that story, I read that there was a 70 billion naira paid as mobilization to various contractors that never showed up. These contractors never showed up at the site to do the job. Sure, you understand? And Mr. President did not hear about this. I'm like, what? How can you pay contractors? They won't do the job and you wouldn't know about this. Not only that, there was a 90.4 billion, billion, hey, we're talking about billions of naira. Another 90 billion naira was discovered to be extra budgetary expenditure. Just imagine that. These people even claim to pay 10 billion as tax. Eh? <laughs> Apparently, there was no record of them paying taxes. Just imagine that. For those that are not familiar with the oil spillage and everything that has been happening in Nigeria, Delta, please take a look at this video. I've heard that more cancer cases are now springing up in the Niger Delta. I heard that the water is contaminated, that even the air is contaminated, which is why I'm so disappointed that someone from there was president for five good years without getting it cleaned up. I mean, take a look at the situation in Niger Delta. You see, all this thing is the crude oil. Look at it. See, as the tide was coming, carrying the crude oil, that is how he flew up to into all the fish pond where there were fish no fish all the ecosystem all is dead which is why i was so excited when i heard that buari has ordered the fast track cleanup i was like ah, thank you jesus as much as i'm excited to hear about this I hope that Buari will pay attention because it goes beyond just approving the cleanup. You have to make sure that the people in charge actually deliver. <laughs> I give him kudos for making this a priority. Interestingly though, so many Nigerians are already used to the culture of, you know, when you approve 100 Naira for projects, they will only spend 10 Naira on the project and pocket the remaining nights. So I hope that Buari will actually follow up and make sure that these people deliver. But you know what is interesting? <laughs> I've been hearing about some 
people call peace committee yeah <laughs> i like deadly these people have been visiting buari to beg him not to probe president jonathan is that so all i know is nigerians are not taking it lightly with these people i heard that last week a group of nigerians protested that whoever stole money must to be probed by fire by force it doesn't matter whether they were president or first lady or petroleum minister who snapped <laughs> just to get well or finance minister whoever they are they said people must be probed eh? no exception take a look at this Nigerians marching against corruption in Abuja. This is coming after a reported call by the Peace Committee for the President not to probe former President Goodluck Jonathan. The protesters marched from Abuja's Unity Fountain to the presidential villa, urging President Muhammad Dubari to probe Mr. Jonathan. Nigerians, peace committee call hmm, by fire by force. I book and I reject. Hey, why can't they go and preach their peace agenda to Boko Haram? Boko Haram is the one that we need to be at peace right now. These people have misplaced priority. They are getting on my nerves. By the way, call it the word. Is it true that Bishop Kuka said that President Jonathan shouldn't be probed because he uh, considered to defeat graciously? Mm, he said it. Is God. I'm watching this peace committee. Like I'm watching them closely. They are like, hey, they want to see my karate on. Hey, these people. They are looking for trouble. It's not their fault. Anyway, you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it true. Moving on to the Republic of Congo. This is different from the Democratic Republic of Congo. And the name of their president is Denis Sasso Ngueso. I'm sorry if I didn't say it correctly. Forgive me. And I cannot believe that the man is seeking a third time next year. I'm like. What? He's seeking third term? In fact, he's trying to change the constitution to eliminate presidential term limits. Keep in mind, by the way, that this man was the president from 1979 to 1992. That's 12 years. Operating a single party regime at that time. So, and then he came back in power at the end of the civil war in 1997. Although he was formally elected as the president in 2002 and re-elected in 2009 all i'm trying to say is the man has been president now for a total of 31 years 31 years yet he wants to run again like am i missing something why are some african presidents it's like they have a problem with their medulla oblaganta of the inside of their periphery of their brain i don't understand it two ministers that opposed his decision for third term he fired them and replaced them i'm like whoa this guy is not even hiding the fact that he's a dictator by the way i know why he doesn't want to of course i know because him and his family have been living a life of opulence at the expense of the people they've been living a life of luxury and they're not ready to change their lifestyle for example in 2006 when this man brought his family and officials to the u.n general assembly here in new york his entourage alone occupied 44 rooms at the Waldorf astoria hotel here in new york 44 rooms and they spent five nights guess what they spent a total of 207 thousand pounds in dollars, that is three hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars for five days. In that same year, Britain gave Congo one hundred and six thousand pounds as humanitarian aid. So the money that they spent at the hotel here in New York is even more than the money they received for humanitarian aid in 2006. Also in the same year of 2006, his son allegedly spent $35,000 on designer clothes in Paris and Dubai like Louis Vuitton. This son that I'm talking about by the way is the director general of Congo's National Petroleum Company. They call it SNPC. That is like their own NNPC. So the father is the president, the son <laughs> is in charge of NNPC. Just imagine that. So this son is in control of the oil money and as of 2013 this son alone reportedly has at least seven cars in paris keep in mind that he lives in congo and works in congo but he has like seven supercars in paris alone including a porsche cayenne a maserati and a bentley coupe i'm telling you money is talking money 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 investigators once found a 257 000 euros bill for guess what for cufflinks and shirts I'm not talking about regular cufflinks that you guys wear. <laughs> I'm talking about cufflinks made with gold and diamonds, like real diamonds, real gold. Can you imagine two hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars? Not only that, there was also another four hundred and seventy-four thousand euros spent almost entirely on shirts. I read somewhere that this son changes his shirt three or four times a day, and he doesn't wear one 
more than once so he actually boasts that he uses shirts like Kleenex I'm telling you there is money in Africa between 2005 and 2011 Mr. President himself is like father like son Mr. President himself spent 1.1 million euros on shirts and suits because he also doesn't wear one suit more than once overall as of 2012 Mr. President and his family have spent more than 60 million euros on luxury items and 20 luxury properties in France according to French authorities and to continue that kind of lifestyle now he wants to run for third term to be honest with you guys stories like this one make me really really upset like really upset especially because the population of the Republic of Congo is only like four and a half million people there is no reason why this country shouldn't be like paradise instead a few people enrich themselves why a lot of people suffer I can't believe the wife also cannot advise the husband but then I heard that she's a relative of a Mobutu Seseko you know that dictator that was in power for 32 years in the Democratic Republic of Congo they were neighbors he later died so my Congolese friend told me that this man has been bleaching his skin for years Umbo? Ah, no wonder I've been seeing like two colors on his face I, I was like ah, what is going on anyway all I know is I'll be updating you guys on whatever happens in this country as elections would be held next year ah, people like this they make me upset fix your country ah too greedy wants to do tall time that's not I don't know much guess what I'm just keeping it real Moving on to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where their president is also looking for me to run for third term, by the way, after 10 years in power. Yeah, I heard that he's scheming, trying to do third term. But what I want to talk about are the street children in the DRC. As you guys are aware, the war has claimed more than 5 million lives, leaving an estimate of between 14 to 20,000 children with no caretakers. These children are known as street children in Kinshasa because they live on the street and they eat on the street they do everything on the street they have nowhere to go and you won't believe what they go through <laughs> wow wow i was so heartbroken watching these children i mean Listen to this. I can't even process that in my mind, you know? They're too young. They're too young to, to fend for themselves. As you can imagine, many of the girls prostitute themselves to make money. Wow. So not only that, many of these children are accused of witchcraft. It, it pains me, you are not taking care of these children and you're accusing them of witchcraft? So they take them to priests that are trying to cast the devil out of them or priests that are forcing them to confess to be witches and wizards. Just imagine, Africa, hey, there is God now. Just imagine, the good thing is there are a number of NGOs helping these children, but they can only do so much. There are so many of these kids. This is a lady, for example, who used to be a street kid herself. I was victim of viol. Now she goes about with ambulance to treat those of the kids that may be injured. These people are the true heroes. One family also touched my heart because they actually moved from France to live in Kinshasa for three years just to help street children. The husband is originally from Kinshasa and the wife is from Europe, but they both moved to Kinshasa with their two daughters. And so far they have helped at least 30 children. Let's take a look. 30 children between the ages of 5 and 17 live here. Many of them have fled violence, prostitution and drugs. They feed us and teach us too. Everything is going well here. Honestly, these people are true heroes. I really, really admire what they've done. Even if it's 30 children, they are making a difference. Hopefully, their story will challenge you to try and make a difference in somebody's life. Even if it's sponsoring one child through school. Hey, you never know what this child will become in the future. Or helping one person that is sick. You never know what could happen if you just reach out and help one person. I'm really hoping that the government of uh, DRC will step up and help these children. I know there are so many of them, but there has to be a program in place, uh, something for these children. Anyway, you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. 
So do you hear that Ghanaian doctors are on strike again? I feel like this happens every year now. I mean, I talked about this last year as well. And as you guys know, doctors are rendering a vital service to the community, which is why we cannot do without doctors and nurses. So why don't they pay them well? That's what I don't understand. In Ghana, a senior doctor gets paid about $920 per month. I'm like, why? Why? See, this is why a lot of African doctors are leaving their countries and taking up jobs abroad. Yes, in America, for example, I heard that an average doctor makes about ten thousand dollars per month. Hey, when I found out, I said, hey, "We need to ah, ten thousand per month. Hey, that is good. We need to change profession. I think let's talk after the service." So you can't blame African doctors that prefer to come here to work. I heard now that these Ghanaian doctors are asking for all kinds of allowances to supplement the inadequate salaries that they are being paid. And let me take a look. The allowances include free postgraduate medical education. Okay, I mean, that sounds reasonable, right? Better retirement packages. Of course, everybody wants better retirement packages. Fuel and maintenance allowances. Hmm. Increases in clothing allowance. So these doctors were being paid clothing allowance. I call it a war. You and I, we need to switch. We need to switch professions. Doctors also want the right to import vehicles into the country free of duty. Uh, why now? Why? Eh? And lastly, they want free overseas healthcare for services that are not available in Ghana. Are, are you serious? I want the doctors to be well treated. So you understand. I The doctors need to be well paid. But free duty, vehicle, importation? Eh, what about the rest of us? Why should doctors alone be singled out when it comes to paying import duty? I, I'm a journalist. Can journalists also get free duty eh, vehicle importation? I, I don't understand that. And why would Ghanaian doctors want free free overseas healthcare for services that are not available in Ghana. I feel like I'm missing something. Hopefully someone can enlighten me. And if a Ghanaian doctor is sick and there's no treatment in Ghana, they want to be able to come to the US or other countries for free treatment. Is that what this is? But what about other people? Other people that get sick? What about when lawyers have to pay for their own treatment? Who's paying for journalists? Eh? But they are doctors. They are doctors now. So why can't they work on making sure that the healthcare system in Ghana is as good as anywhere else in the world? I, I, I would think that would be the priority to make sure they don't even have to go to the US or UK for treatment. And you're telling me that thousands of people are stranded with no medical treatment because of this allowance and clothing allowance and duty free. I, are you serious? You want to be able to go abroad for treatment? Ghanaian doctors. It's not fair. I, by the way, is it true that the uh, Ghanaian government is uh, flying in about 170 doctors from Cuba. Hey, whoa, yawa dongas. Ah, my people, I'm waiting to see how this plays out. Eh? Instead of giving them stupid allowances like those that they are asking for, the government of Ghana should just pay them decent salary, decent wages. Eh? And these people will be able to take care of themselves and their families and they can come here for treatment if they want to. But you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So last week, I featured a Senegalese brother of mine, a basketballer by the name Taco Fall. As you all know, there are a number of Nigerians in the NBA. And so this week, I'd like you all to meet my Nigerian brother. Yes, so if you are in Festus, is Yes, so What's up, bro? How you doing? I know you don't know me. It's okay. He currently plays for the Golden State Warriors. And the guy is 6'11". 6'11". I was like, what? My God, my God. His story is quite inspiring. Though. He was born in 1989. He moved to the US at 14, right after he finished secondary school to go to college here and become, of course, a medical doctor. <laughs> in fact, his parents made him stay with his uncle in California, who's a medical doctor, so he could shadow his uncle and he could learn fast when it comes to the medical field. But he was already 6'6 by the time he came to the US. And when the uncle looked at him, he was like, Oh boy, <laughs> you need to play basketball. We can do something with this height. This is a gift. We must imagine at this gift. <laughs> he didn't know how to play basketball, so he told his uncle, I'm not here to play, I'm here to be a medical doctor. <laughs> his uncle said, yes, you can study to be a medical doctor and still play basketball at the same time. By the way, basketball will pay for your tuition. So he agreed to play and his family also agreed that he should play, but he wasn't good at all. He didn't know how to play. He took a year of classes at Jesuit High School in Sacramento and he actually scored his first goal in his team 
him's basket. Just imagine how embarrassing that must have been. At another time, they dropped him from the team. It was a very discouraging time for him as a teenager, just coming from Nigeria and he's not able to play basketball. But what I really, really admire about him is that he did not give up. He didn't give up. At the age of 16, he enrolled part-time at Yuba Community College and that was where the coach took time to teach him how to play basketball. By the time he was done, he was already 6'11". And guess what happened? About 38 universities and colleges offered him full scholarship to play for them, including 27 Division I schools. See how God works, huh? Of course, his mom wanted him to go to Harvard University. And you know, Harvard was one of the schools that offered him scholarship, by the way. I mean, all parents want their children to go to Harvard. But he chose to attend Vanderbilt, which is in Tennessee, so he could advance in his basketball career because their team is very well known. Although he started college as a biology major, he later changed his major to economics because of the time demands of basketball. Today, the guy is a star. I mean, he is huge. And his whole family is so proud of him. He was recently in South Africa to play in the African version of NBA. I'm very proud of him too. The only thing is, I've been trying to reach him just for him to remember me because we are related. You know, we all grew up under the same tree. His father's uncle's friend was like very tight with the, the father born of the relation um, from our side of the compound. So for parents that are watching, if you have kids as tall as me, because I'm actually very tall. It's just that you guys, you can't see it. So please don't say that your children must be doctors by fire by force or lawyers by fire by force. Thank God that my parents did not say I should be doctors. Eh! Just imagine every patient that comes in, I'll be asking them about the politics of their country. Eh? So is it true? So you're from Kenya? Ah, my brother. I heard about your president. Hold on, we'll take your blood pressure later. I'm not saying that all kids that play basketball will end up in the NBA. No, because, you know, uh, you have to be exceptional. But I'm saying that while you're pursuing your medical degree or whatever degree, let them explore other stuff as well. Here you understand? You just never know. Now he can even hire doctors. Here you understand? You can even build your own medical school. So please let your children be whatever they want to be. If they say they want to be designers, designers are making a lot of money. If you guys know I don't know much, congratulations to my brother. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Before I leave today, I like to read some of your emails. And the first one is from Kenny Soluade. And this person says, hi Adeola. I just have a suggestion. Do you think that you can always put up the link or details for donating to people's causes in the description section of your videos? I usually try and donate, but then it becomes a wahala trying to search for the links. For instance, I wasn't able to find a GoFundMe account for Baba Tope with the spinal cord issue. I know I could also try calling the Nigerian numbers, but I'm not too comfortable with that. And most likely going through the whole Western Union thing. Just a suggestion. I'm just keeping it real. In the meantime, I'll try to donate through the avenue available. By the way, this person says to say hello to you, call it all. Yeah, whatever. Thank you so much uh, for writing. I really, really appreciate this, that you're even trying to donate. We'll be adding this in the description, but not only that, make sure that you go on my website. If I talk about donating to someone, you can always find the full information on my website and on how to give and how to reach the family members. But thank you so much for at least willing to donate. I really, really appreciate it. The next email is from Charles Kalu and he says, hi, Adiola. Thank you for the smile and the joy you bring to us with your show. Thumbs up. Oh, that, that's like so nice of you. Oh my God, that's so lovely. I'm, I'm not gonna cry. That's like so hard touching right there. Thank you, thank you so much. And the next email is from Olatayo Adeniro and he says, hi, Adiola. You're really keeping it real and I really enjoy the show. Keep knowing what you know best. God bless you. God bless Buari. God bless Nigeria. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. These are like really nice emails today. All right, guys. That's all the time that I have for emails today. Please keep sending your emails to adiola.keepingitreal at gmail.com. All right, y'all. It's been real and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.